Are we open? Oh, we're out. We are live. Welcome. All right. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to have you all here. All right. A couple of quick announcements. First of all, a big, huge thank you to everyone who helped out this weekend. We had the Atlantic Mission District came into town. How many? 40 some churches? Uh, 40, I think we're, we might be 42. 42 churches or so that from New York down to just about the bottom of Virginia came and visited us and had a great time. And I'm um, going to actually introduce uh, Dean McGettigan real quick here. His, um, he's the dean of our mission district. I'm going to need you the mic this time, otherwise, I got, I got yelled at. Because, um, see, we're live streaming now. For those, who, did you guys know that we're doing that? Everybody turn and wave hi. Hey. Everybody that's not here. Um, so, this is the dean. Yeah. It's on. You're good. Hello, hello. They'll turn you up, hello. hopefully. Hello. Just got to push a button. Hello. There you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Pastor Jay, for this opportunity to say thank you to you. The Atlantic uh, Mission Region and Lutherans for Life did joint convocation and conference Friday and Saturday here. And it was amazing. It was powerful. It was purposeful. The Lord was moving all over the place through us. And uh, what, really, what really made it great in the end was the final touch. And, and that's what I want to say a word about. The final touch was Trinity. Uh, first of all, they love your facility. All of my churches love your facility. <laughs> but your people, they love. The orange shirts those volunteers who wear those orange shirts that tell you so you can find them, uh, and the security who wear black shirts, it looks like, yeah. were absolutely magnificent. The hospitality was incredible. And it wasn't just opening the door when you come in and saying, yeah, hi, how you doing? You know, or making sure the temperature was right or, or all the great food that they put out. We were fed incredibly. It was them. It was, it was their relationship with us. Um, it wasn't just that they said the perfunctory hi as you came in and then, you know, got you in here and got you sitting down. Those orange shirts Perfect. talked to us, smiled at us. When you walked out from almost every conference in this space to go out for a break or to go for a meal or something, there were a group of orange shirts come to you and say, hi, is everything okay? Do you need anything? Can you find this? Um, is there something that I can do for you? It was interactive and it was wonderful. My dear friends of Trinity, I presume that that's the kind of hospitality you exercise regularly to strangers who come in those doors. Uh, and if I'm right about that, and I believe that I am, I will tell you that it is New Testament hospitality, it is Christian community hospitality, and it is an element of your life that will grow you because that love and care, that, that personal interaction you know what it's like to be a stranger and go to a strange church? It is awkward. And here, no one felt awkward. You will grow the folks who come in those doors in Christ. And here's the great news. You will grow as well because they feel the koinonia, the Christian community, the welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. Great work. Praise God and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Sir. We also have another guest preacher today. <laughs> Sorry, that was good. Um, his name is Pastor Buva. He is our director of mission for the North American Lutheran Church, and we're excited to have him here today to proclaim God's word. So welcome on, on behalf of us, and we're glad to have you here. So, um, Yeah, put the seatbelts on, because we're going to be, we're going to hit the disciple path and see what it's like. So, All right, um, just a, other, a couple other quick announcements. The um, next week is Reformation Sunday, so we're going to have our traditional Reformation uh, celebration that we would do, the German fest, that kind of piece. But on the second half of our, our day, we're going to also include All Saints Sunday. Uh, so we're combining the two together, uh, which is appropriate. Martin Luther posted his 95 theses on, on All Saints Eve, so on All Saints Sunday Eve. And so with that, we wanna, we're going to transition from Reformation Day into um, all Saints Sunday that day. So if you have lost loved ones, we want to make sure we're lifting them up, praying, and, and that kind of thing. The reason for that is because on actual All Saints Sunday weekend, we are going to have the, the youth choir that's coming from World Help. Is it World Help? Yeah. So the children's choir. And actually, we're going to see a quick little video about that as a nice transition.
Very good. And so for, if you didn't um, make the connection, World Help is actually who we've been sending folks out uh, to Guatemala for. So this is kind of how we got connected. So we have a great connection with them. Uh, so Friday, they're going to do a presentation for the school, a nice concert. And then on Sunday, they're going to do both services for us as well. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to that. The only caveat still, we need a couple of host homes. Right now, I think, Mike, you have 12 kids staying with you. <laughs> it might be the entire choir, we're not sure. But, uh, so if anybody is able to offer up their home for that weekend as well, uh, it has to be a two-person home and, and, and provide transportation that. But please let us know, because otherwise we'll all be helping Mike out afterwards. <laughs> so, all right, well, very good. Any other announcements? I missed anything? We're still collecting candy for our 1,500 friends that are going to join us on, on the 30th of, of October for Trunk or Treat. Um, other than that, I think we're ready to worship. Yes? Awesome. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment, share God's great peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Thank you. God's peace, yes. Peace be with you, yes. God's peace be with you. God's peace with you. you. Thank you. Peace be with you again. Yes. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you again, yes. Sing out together. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you your presence, sing it out. Your presence is an open door, and we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door, so come now, Lord. Every season we sing. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing the best is yet to come. With the cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus. The best is yet to come. Sing it out. Your presence. Your presence is an open door. And we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now. Sing this out, every voice. I know a breakthrough is coming. We sing. And I know breakthrough is coming.
And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Your presence is in all. And we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. Just come now, Lord, like never before. To the last breath I breathe The Lord watches over me You hear my cry and you know every need The Lord watches over me You never fail me, God And I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes up Maker of the heavens, keeper of my heart. I lift my hands, I lift my hands up, standing in your presence. You are never far. I look to you where my help comes from. The Lord watches over me. Your mercies are new with the morning sun. The Lord watches over me. You never failed me, God. And I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes up. Maker of the heavens, keeper of my heart. Standing in your presence, you are never far. I lift. And I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes up. Maker of the heavens, keeper of my heart. And I lift my hands, I lift my hands up. Standing in your presence, you are never far. Keeper of my heart. Keeper of my heart, Jesus, you are my strength, never-ending love. I know you have overcome. I'll see when all is said and done. You're my hope, my only hope. My strength, my strength, you never. You have overcome. I'll sing when all is said and done. You're my hope, my only hope. I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes up. Maker of the heavens, keeper of my heart. And I lift my hands, I lift my hands up. Standing in your presence, you are never far. One more time, I lift. And I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes up. Maker of the heavens, keeper of my heart. And I lift my hands, I lift my hands up. Standing in your presence, you are never far. Keeper of my heart. Keeper of my heart, 
Jesus, you are keeper of my heart. Keeper of my heart, Jesus, you are keeper of my heart. You're not going to want to sit for long, but I invite you to be seated. <laughs> I want to introduce to you Pastor Gameshis Buba, who is here from uh, the North American Lutheran Church. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. All right. God's bless. One, two. Yes. <clears throat> I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God. Amen. It is a great joy to be with you, and I bring you greetings from our uh, North American Lutheran Church, from your church, from our new bishop, John, uh, Don Selbo, and I also uh, bring you greetings from my mission work. I just came back yesterday from Ethiopia and from Dubai doing mission work, so my clock is so confused. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm in the morning or in the evening, so uh, bear with me. And I also bring you greetings from my family, from my wife and three kids who I have not seen for the last two weeks, and I hope to see them in a few hours after I leave from here. And it was a joy to be part of the Mission District Conference, even though I came a day late. And uh, it is uh, such a joy to see how Pastor David is leading the district, and uh, your hospitality, as he said, was wonderful. And I rejoice in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. And thank you, Pastor Jay, for inviting me to stay behind and give you a break. <laughs> Today, I'm going to share with you on one of the themes that we are upholding and uplifting in the North American Lutheran Church a theme of discipleship, a theme and a lifestyle that Jesus invites us into. And I'm going to read from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. Would you please stand with me as I read the Gospel text? Matthew chapter 28, starting from verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Shall we pray, please? Dear everlasting Father, we come before you with open arms, open hearts, and open mind, inviting you to speak to us. Share your heart, your message, your love, and your grace with us, broken sinners. When your word comes, we become whole, we become healed, and we become encouraged. I pray that your Holy Spirit will flow up and down every aisle, in and out every row, touching, healing, restoring, and encouraging your people. I pray that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth, none of me, but all of you in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people of God said... A little louder. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Jesus. I just come from Africa, so I expect loud amens. <laughs> and with my blurry eyes looking at you, you look like Africans who have been away from the sun for a long, long time. The Great Commission of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 
way at the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth. Before he left, he was encouraging his disciples to go and make more disciples. A Christian life is a life of a disciple. A disciple is someone who has a relationship with Jesus, who learns from Jesus, and who follows Jesus. Three things. Having a relationship like a saved sinner, like a son and a father, like a child of God, a relationship like a friend, like a confidant, like someone who depends and who counts on Jesus for everything. A disciple is someone who has an intimate, authentic, genuine relationship with Jesus. A disciple is someone who learns Jesus and who learns from Jesus, who experiences the knowledge of the Word of God deeper and deeper, rooted and grounded in the faith. A disciple is someone who obeys and follows Jesus. And Jesus invites us into that kind of relationship. Jesus is not a religious leader. He's not a philosopher. He's not a government person. He's not a politician. He's not a teacher. He's a savior who saves sinners. And after that, loves them and walks with them all the days of their life into eternity. Therefore, he invites us into that kind of lifestyle. So at the end of his life, the 11 disciples went to Galilee as they were told by Jesus. On the mountaintop, Jesus was speaking with them. And we see three glaring pillars of what it means to be a disciple. And I'm going to share with you those three points and finish. The first one was while he was on the mountaintop, the Bible says they came and saw him. Saw him with their eyes. Saw him with their conscience. Saw him with their heart. Saw him with their passion. Saw Jesus. The big question is, have you seen Jesus? Can you describe him? Can you paint him? Can you sing him? Can you write about him? Can you express him? Can you explain him? Have you seen Jesus? What, what does it mean for you to follow him? Who is this God that you are worshiping? Have you seen Jesus? They saw him. They looked at him. They touched him. They experienced him. They felt him. They sat beside him. They ate with him. They spoke with him. He asked them questions. They answered. And they asked him questions. He answered. So the Bible says, 40 days and 40 nights he stayed with them. And at the end he left them with so many convincing Proofs that he was alive. He had so many convincing proofs. That means they have seen him. Christianity is about conviction. It's not about doubt. It's not about some kind of 50-50 walk. A lot of religions are like that. I just came back. From, a mid, from the Middle East, where the overwhelming majority worship and follow a religion that is saying your life is always 50-50. Nobody knows whether you're going to heaven or not. In their teaching, in the Islamic teaching, they say there are two angels on the left shoulder and on the right shoulder. The one on the left shoulder will always record your bad deeds. The one on the right shoulder will always record your good deeds. And at the end of your life, the record will be presented to Allah. And whichever is more, the decision will be based on that. I don't know about yours, but I know which one is bigger for me. <laughs> so everyone walks depressed and sad. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know whether I'm making it or not. I am not sure. 
Christianity is not like that. We know someone died for us and he was crucified and he was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He forgave our sins. He redeemed our life. He prepared an eternal home for us. One day he's coming back to take us home. We have the conviction that he is alive. If you believe in that, shout amen. amen. We have the conviction. We have seen him. That's why we believe in him. That is Christianity. We're not walking with doubt. We're not walking with fear. We're not walking with some kind of fatalist destination. We don't know where we're going. Somebody knows. We have seen him. That's why we rejoice. That's why Christianity says rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice because you have seen you redeemer. You have seen Jesus. One time a German preacher by the name Hermann Franke. One of the pietist leaders at the beginning of the pietist movement was getting ready to preach on Christmas morning. And as he was preparing his sermon, the same message that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, born in Bethlehem in the middle of darkness among the shepherds. He says, I have preached this sermon over and over. I know that he was born in Bethlehem. But he said, what is the use, Jesus, if I teach and talk about you being born in Bethlehem? And if you're not born in my heart, I pray that today you come and be born in Herman Franke's heart. And his life has never been the same. The pietist movement and Lutheran mission movement started. As a result of that movement, now we have Lutheran churches all over Africa. We have Lutheran mission movements all over Africa. Because Jesus was born in his heart. And that revival started among Lutherans in Germany, sending out missionaries from Germany and Sweden and Denmark and Norway and the United States. Now we have so many Christians all over the world. Do you know, now there are more Lutherans in Africa than North America, South America, and Asia combined. The largest Lutheran churches are in Africa, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, close to 10 million Lutherans in both nations, growing so rapidly because when Jesus is born in your heart, when he is in your life, when you can say, I know him, I have seen him, I have touched him, I have felt him, I follow him, I listen to him. When you say, I know Jesus, your life would never be the same. There are so many people who know the word, but they don't know the voice. They know the stories. They've heard it from their childhood, from Sunday school, all the way to their gray life. But they have never heard the true, authentic voice of Jesus. There is a reason why Jesus said in the Gospel of John, my sheep, my sheep know my voice voice not my words my voice i have to tell you this example i've told the other two since last saturday when i call home from anywhere in the world even though my wife sees weird number whether it is from asia or from dubai or from ethiopia or from kuwait or from wherever i am she picks up the phone and she knows my voice because the universal word when people pick up the phone is hello. The word is the same, but the voice is not the same. That's why when the voice is familiar, a spouse or a child or a family member, you just start talking because you know the voice. But if my wife picks up, even though she hears my voice, if she says, who is this? That means I'm in trouble. <laughs> then something really bad. Do you know the voice of your Lord? When you are in the middle of turmoil, He speaks to you and He calms you down. 
when you are in the middle of a messy sinful broken life he speaks to you and he forgives you when you come to church every sunday pastor j will lead confession and after that he says as an ordained minister of the lord i declare unto you the entire forgiveness of your sin that means you are forgiven you go home free that is the voice of jesus experiencing the voice of jesus a disciple is someone who says i know jesus i heard jesus i have seen jesus i love jesus i follow jesus i give my life to jesus because beyond a doubt i know him and i am willing to live for him and i am willing to die for him that's why these 11 disciples except james all of them died in the foreign land preaching the gospel of jesus christ they gave their life with joy the first pillar of being a disciple is knowing jesus to the fullest the second pillar is where it says after they saw him they worshiped him what does it mean to worship him worship is beyond human to human relationship worship is human to god relationship Yes, there are moments when Jesus was human to human relationship. He is a child. They considered him a child of Mary, a son of a carpenter, someone who was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, an ordinary Jew, a human being walking among us. That was human to human relationship. But all of a sudden, they saw him and now they worshiped him. He is no more a human to them. He is God. Jesus Christ is our God and we worship him. When we worship him, we exalt him. We sing about him. We take our life out of the picture. When we make him the center of our life, we worship him. But the Bible says some doubted. Even though I am a preacher, there are times I doubt. Even though I am a believer, there are times I doubt. Faith is not perfection. Faith is walking between worship and doubt. One day we worship at the top of our voice from the depths of our heart with the deepest passion in our life and we worship Him. And sometimes... We doubt. Where is God? Is there a God in my life? Is there a God in my home? Where is God? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is there a God? Is there a balm in Gilead? Like they say it in the book of Jeremiah. Is there a God in my home? When I'm struggling with cancer, when I'm going through divorce, when I'm going through painful experiences, when I'm lacking finances, when I am going through depression, when I'm going through confusion, when somebody beloved to me departs from me through death or through departure, one way or the other, my life is sometimes going through the deepest darkness and I doubt, where is my God? Why is my God allowing these things to happen to my life? A disciple is someone who stands and wrestles with those questions. Worship and doubt. Not in two different people. In the same person. In me and you. Hold on. Keep on struggling. Keep on wrestling. Keep on walking. Life is up and down, in and out, success and failure, confusion and right direction. But through all that, Jesus is our anchor. Through all that, Jesus is our pillar. 
and we follow him and he never lets us go hallelujah if you love it shout amen, amen. just follow him never let him go he will never leave you nor forsake you that's what we call worship and doubt sometimes we experience deep fear in our life one day i learned a great lesson from my daughter she was four year old and i took her to a water slide i hate those things <laughs> i can't lie to you i'm scared of them roller coaster and water slides from the top all the way down and my kids love them and she said we have to go daddy we have to go daddy we have to go daddy and we went up and we were waiting for our turn and i was hoping and praying that she would be scared and make a decision to go back <laughs> and my prayer was not heard i almost said lama lama sabaktani <laughs> and we were on the top and the slide was so big and in front of us were a couple with a precious son and their son looked down and started crying i said hallelujah my prayer started to answer and he kept crying and the crying gets loud and loud i hope this fear is contagious it will pass to my daughter <laughs> but she was just standing and watching him and the parents and asked do you want to go back or do you want this slide and the boy said i want to go back i said what a wise boy <laughs> and then they turned around and i looked at my daughter I said, what are you going to do now? I said, are you scared? And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, I don't care if I'm scared because I know Jesus is with me. I learned such a big lesson. I don't care if I'm scared. She did not say I'm not scared. She said, I don't care if I'm scared. My brothers and sisters, you will be scared. You will be confused. You will be worried. You will be sometimes depressed in life, unhappy. But those things must be ignored. And I don't care if I'm going through all those things. Because there is one fact established and written in the word of God. He said, I will be with you all the time. In the middle of your fear, in the middle of the fire, in the middle of water, in the middle of joy, in the middle of sorrow, in the middle of victory and success, whether you are poor or rich, he says, I will be with you. I am your foundation. I am your rock. Hallelujah. Shout amen in this house. Amen. He says, I will be with you, Trinity. I will be with you, people of God. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And the third and the final pillar in being a disciple is hearing and obeying the word of God. Once they worshipped him, now the voice came, now the word came. And this is what he said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. All authority is given to me. Therefore, go as you exit from this building he's saying go go to your dream go to your uh, plans go to your vision go to your call go to your vocation with absolute confidence when you go to your work when you go to your labor go trusting in me go to the next chapter go to the next year go to the next project go to the next calling go to the next level in your life trusting in me for i will be with you but in everything that you do wherever you are remember you are my ambassadors for i am always with you i will never leave you nor forsake you who is a disciple a disciple is someone who have seen jesus a disciple is someone who worships Jesus whenever there is doubt, who never gives up and who never quits to follow Jesus. So many people quit 
worshipping Jesus. They tell you, I have been a Christian. I have been a Christian. Now we've left him alone. We have surrendered to our dream. I remembered what I heard doing ministry in New Zealand. There is a group of ethnic nationalities in New Zealand who almost 100% worship Jesus. Before they started worshiping Jesus, that was a culture that they were practicing cannibalism, which means they ate human flesh. So that culture was changed by the gospel because there was one missionary who went from England, London, England, and started to preach the gospel to them. But when he went there, he was so tall, he was so thin, and he was so white. So they, they were not ready to eat him. They said, they said, let's feed him a little bit. Put some meat on him. So they welcomed him, and they were feeding him in the morning and noontime and evening and giving him a lot of food, and he was amazed at their hospitality. <laughs> but the one thing, while they were feeding him, he was telling them about Jesus. Feeding him, he was telling about Jesus. All of a sudden, few of them started to believe, and the plan to eat him was canceled. And they started to teach and to witness and to witness one, now they are 100% Christians. 100% and cannibalism is gone away. And all of them go to Sunday with their big Bibles under their arms. All of them go to Sunday. One kind of fiery liberal journalist went from London, England after 100 years of that story. Just to see if these people still believe in Jesus. And he was amazed that all of them still believe in Jesus. And they all walk to their Bible with their big Bibles under their arms like this. And he asked them, do you still believe in that book? And they looked at him and they said, what do you mean? He said, since 100 years ago, one Englishman came and told you about that. Do you still believe in that Bible? He said, absolutely yes. And they asked him, what about you? He said, I used to. We used to. Now maybe 2-3% of our nation goes to church. We have stopped believing in this. We have stopped. And the elderly people looked at him. Oh, our friend, you are a very, very lucky man. If this Bible was not here, you would have ended up in here. The Bible changed cultures, but we should not quit. So many Christians are giving up on Christianity, surrendering to doubt, surrendering to new teachings, surrendering to revisionism, surrendering to denial and atheism. But we continue to believe. Who is a disciple? A disciple is someone who has seen Jesus. A disciple is someone who worships Jesus in spite of all the struggle and doubt in their life. A disciple is someone who hears the word of God and follows Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that spirit, that joy, that conviction would be in each and every one of you. And that Jesus would be holding your hands to the ends of your life. If you believe in this, shout amen three times. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's close our eyes and pray that the Holy Spirit will lead these words into motion. Father, these words proclaimed in this house, in this place, I pray, would go into action. As you said, my words will never return void. Your words have come. Your voice we've heard. Your message we've received. Now as we exit from these buildings and scatter all over this community, I pray that we go with your little light in our life, with confidence on our mind, with total trust, and upon you, total faith. I pray 
your words will continue to uphold us and guide us. In the name of Jesus Christ, your wonderful son, I pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. As I walk, as I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear, like the sun shaping the shadow. Come, 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Sing that again, Holy Spirit. Gracious Creator, thank you for your word. Help us to hold the word over our lives and to know that it will always be there for us, to comfort and to challenge us. Give us the discipline and the obedience to use it every day to guide our lives. We pray for those who are being led by the, the world and not by your word. Protect churches living under persecution. Erase the lines of country and race and class that separate us from their struggle. We give thanks for the joy of living in a country that allows us to pray and to read freely. As the world around us asserts more control, help us to remain absolute and resolute in our faith, in your word, which is our foundation. Teach us to treasure and nurture the world around us, to reawaken our sense of wonder at the miracle and sanctity of life. You breathe your breath into all of us, Lord. Your breath is so very powerful and freeing. Move us closer to the intimacy that your breath of life commands us all. Give hope to those weighed down by fear and worry, those who are unemployed, the depressed, suicidal, those who are ill or in pain or in any way overwhelmed. You created us in your image. You wish to give us all good things. Where your people need refreshed and reclaimed, we pray that you will use us as those instruments of your healing and mercy and grace wherever you may lead us. Lord, we lift before you this day all those who are in need of your healing presence, many of whom walk with us in this worship community. Connect us more deeply by your call to us to be your hands and feet. We pray for the transformation of those lives that need your love. And you tell us to ask and we shall receive. So we ask for the healing of those lives whom we lift before you, either in our hearts or out loud before your throne. Now, loving Father, the hope we hold in the resurrection of your Son is more than we deserve and more than some of us can comprehend. Help us to share that gift of hope to those who need the assurance of a joy that transcends this world. Set our minds on things above, and at the last, join us with our faithful departed brothers and sisters to bring us to eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, as we prepare to receive the meal that is set before us, let us enter into a time of a brief confession and forgiveness. Lord, we come before you with empty hands, empty hearts. We confess to you today where we have strayed from you, where we may have heard your voice but it has been drowned out by the noise of this world where we have been distracted and we have set aside obedience to your will to obedience to our own. Father, we confess before you today all of those sins which we have committed, those things which we have done and those things which we have left undone. We lay them before you at your altar. We come to worship you in this place. We come to experience your presence. Come meet us here, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. As we take a moment for silent reflection.
And now, my friends, hear the voice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he tells you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, it was in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And when they had finished supper, he took the cup. He gave it for all to drink and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The feast is ready. Please come and eat. I invite you to be seated. Behind your regrets and mistakes 
come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing all Christ is risen, bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all, sing Alleluia, Christ is risen, oh what a say. The altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Now, having been fed, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us all and keep us forever in his grace to everlasting life. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us this day. May the Lord's face always shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord always look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. Amen.
Thanks for watching. Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church can be found at 1100 Philadelphia Road in Joppa, Maryland and at trinityjoppa.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Be sure to check out the Facebook page for our Trinity Joppa YouTube channel and please consider supporting our Patreon at patreon.com slash trinityjoppa. God bless.